Welcome to Pagan Crafting. I'm your host, Kara. Today, we're going to make a fairy mushroom ring diorama. We're going to modify some miniatures. We're going to make some tiny mushrooms from polymer clay. Make some stones with ancient symbols from styrofoam. We are going to have some fun today. Join us as we play with the fairies and make a mushroom ring diorama. So first we're going to start off is about an 8 to 10 inch piece of wood. I'm going to grab some brown as well as some off green paint. We're going to mix them up so I'm not going to worry about blending them on a paper plate or anything like that. Just pour your paint on. We're going to be laying down some moss for grass later, so in case it doesn't quite coverage at all, it's nice to have a base coat to work with. I'm going to just simply blend right on there because we're not really going to see this anyway. And I made it more of an olive green. I added a little bit more green in the center just to punch out and match up a bit more of the moss layer. It's pretty thick paint, but that's okay. We're going to add some glue here while everything is still wet. I mixed water down one part water, one part glue. Now you can wait for the paint to dry too, but I enjoy making a mess. So this is what just happens. My glue is getting a little bit low in the jar, so it's not wanting to squirt out as easy in the, the sprayer as well. But again, just one part water, one part glue, mix her up, thins it out really nicely. Now I've just taken some regular moss. Apparently there's like a shortage of reindeer moss. I'm having problems. I took this moss and just cut it up as fine as I possibly could. You can put it in your herbal grinder as well, and that'll also bring it to a nice finer point. Now we want as fine as possible, so I'm kind of digging at the bottom of the bowl for more of the powder to use. I'm going to use this as a grass. Just shaking the bigger chunks on top, moving that away and using more of the little pieces for the grass. It works out great, great. And it's super inexpensive. $10 a bag versus a couple dollars. Can't go wrong. Just gotta cut up your grass yourself. So hopefully you put a good healthy amount of glue down. And you'll have a nice little coverage. Give it a little pat down too before you shake it off. And any parts that's a little bit lighter, just go back and throw a little bit more down. I try to use the most powdery stuff that I could find. You can always add a little bit more glue, lay that in again. All right, liking that. So we're going to allow that to dry but before we do we want to give it another coating of the watered down glue I'm using 
a flat Mod Podge glue. You could use a white craft glue too. You don't need to put this much down. Instead of taking 24 hours to dry, it wound up taking me almost two days for it to dry. That was a little bit much, but it dries super hard and it's great. And none of the moss falls off or flakes off too. I'm using some polymer clay, grabbing any color here. We're going to make some little mushrooms now, some little teeny tiny little mushrooms. These are little mushroom heads we're going to use. And I'm going to use my little tool so I can be able to put in a little stem in there later. I'm just going to glue the stem in. Because some of them I made so small, they were just so tiny to try to squish on the stem and the tip together. So I want to just gluing them later with some translucent craft glue. And what you want to do is make your little snake out and just cut a bunch of stems up. Find out the size of your stem and just cut a few of them out. Now these ones you can just bake. I've made a whole bunch of them ready to go here. I've just used whatever colors I had laying around that was easy to manipulate. Using one of my styrofoam pieces is just going to be easier to paint the tips of the heads of this way. I have so many little tiny ones. I'm so excited to paint them all. It's going to be a little tedious to get the dots on, but it's going to be so, so worth it. So by putting them on all the styrofoam, it makes it so much easier to paint. And you don't get paint all over your table or your hands. So these little great sculpting tools are not only awesome for sculpting, but I originally was using them always to either trace with my graphite paper or make dots with, make stars with when, when I was doing my painting. So you can get in super small and accurate with these. Way better than a paintbrush and totally faster. Now, as I do finish painting the heads of these mushrooms, I'm going to line up the sizes from biggest to smallest. So when I'm working on my mushroom ring, it'll be a little bit easier to kind of grab and go. So just working all the little teeny tiny ones first. These are so microscopic. If I don't use them all, I'm going to save them for some other stuff. Look at these. These are so cute. Oh, I love them! And while that's going to dry, we're going to work on another part of this project. We're going to work on making some of the stones. So it's about maybe an inch and a quarter thickness and I'm going to cut them on an angle so I, I want them really super old looking. I'm not going to give these ones a lot of texture. I'm going to give them a more of a smooth finish because I want to give them kind of like a stone gem, kind of a stone crystal feel if you will. Now that's all hard and ready to go. I want to make the shape of a star. I have about five pieces. I was originally thinking six pieces. And then I just like the look at the five or remind me of a five pointed star. So then I wanted to go with the elements. So I'm going to put the elemental symbol on each one of these along with uh, a spiral for spirituality. So just trimming off the edges, having some fun, make, giving them kind of like, like I said, like a crystal look. I'll have to experiment this in another video, how I can make some crystals out of these. Now 
now my first ones that i made of these stones they were fine for the size but then i decided to put symbols on them so they wound up being a little bit too small a little bit too flat i wound up redoing them all so what you see here let's just call them prototypes because i like the thicker one here that's in my hand right now uh, these ones turned out well on their own but i really didn't have a good solid face so i wound up having to recut them all and then what you want to do before you paint them you want to be able to carve in your symbols and your runes and in, into the stones before you do anything because the paint and the Mod Podge glue that I do creates quite a nice little seal on these little foam guys. Now this is a symbol for spirituality. And all these symbols I'm doing here is earth, air, fire, water. So now what you do is you want to put a Mod Podge seal on it to create a bit more of a harder surface to paint on because this type of uh, foam that I use is for plants. So it's actually quite squishable, quite easy, movable. And if you pick it up or play with it a lot, it's, it's not going to last very well. So the, the seal, now that it's dried, it creates a really nice base to paint on. So we're going to paint everything black first. And then what we're going to do, we're going to be dry brushing different layers of gray over top of the black. Now I like to be able to mix the black and gray beside itself not by by the colors of gray because you can do such a transition of color and it's more of a natural look if you just if you just mix your own colors really and you don't have to mix it super fluid you can have some other colors kind of bleeding into it some streaky points into it too that's okay because it's going to be dry brushed on so starting off with a dark gray and just super light you just want to catch the corners a little bit if you will you will pick up i didn't add any texture to it but it does have a little bit on its own and the paint will pick that up quite nicely look at that oh it's already taken shape and that's just the first layer taking shape already I like it oh these are gonna look so cute with the mushrooms all right so next up we want to do is a lighter gray and going back and doing the exact same technique I brought I brushed the other light gray over top of the the dark gray to see if it's enough but it was a little bit too brilliant so I mixed up more of a medium gray that looks really sharp now and just take your time you only wanted to pick up a little bit of the color here and there over top of it you want some of the darker grays and some of the black to still be able to show through. Just brush it on so soft. I think this is the most rewarding part is making these rocks out of this whole project. <laughs> all 
alrighty. So now that that's all done, I'd like to add some moss. So before I add my actual moss onto the stones, I'm going to add some moss paint. Now this is a nice sage green and olive green. And I'm going to trash brush this on with a boar's hair brush. The boar's hair is a very sticky, prickly brush that creates some nice techniques. So just trash brushing it on, dabbing it on, dry brushing it on. You don't want a lot of paint when you do this one either. So it's very, 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 very light. And just build up your layers. I especially like putting around the, the base of the stone. You can see the subtle differences. It'll just pop it out and age it a little bit more. So I wound up also making an extra piece and going with a centerpiece. Not planning that, but that's what happened. So these are how I'm going to lay out all the pieces, following the directions of the north, south, east, west by the placement of the elements. So next what we're going to be doing is painting the stems and underneath the mushroom tops. I'm mixing a cream color and a white together. So painting underneath the tops, kind of a cream, the stem white, and then the very, very, very base of the mushroom, I also painted a cream. Ready to secure these on using some hot glue. I didn't paint the bottoms to catch it on a little bit. So it'd be really, really, really good. I can squeeze it down a little bit more and it'll kind of imprint it into the grass too. Okay, so now that those are all set, I'm feeling that. So yeah, I'm going to go with that centerpiece. I still wasn't quite sure my hands were twitching there, but I'm going to go for it. Now we're going to grab some translucent cra craft glue. And I wound up using the translucent craft glue to help me glue on the little teeny tiny mushrooms. I had to use some tweezers because it was hard to get on with my fingers. I had to balance them out. They were quite small. Sometimes I had to balance with my fingertips and chopsticks. And it was interesting trying to get all these little guys to get in there. But the translucent craft glue. Why can't I say that word today? I don't know. It worked out really nice. So I just dabbed some in my spoon right here. And I went with all the bigger ones first. Spacing them out as I go along. First, I decided to make a star with them and just try to match them out and even them out. So after I used up the largest mushrooms, I went into the medium ones and then I started overlapping with some of the tinier ones. I was hoping to kind of save some of the smaller ones for some of the projects that's going to be coming up in the future, but I didn't use them all. If I didn't use the stones, I probably would have made a larger fairy ring, but the size of the fairies that I used they wound up turning out to be just a great size, a great circumference of the ring. Now I'm just cutting down some of these stems because I just threw the stems on however they came out when I was gluing them on and I thought you know what I'll adjust them to size as needed. I wound up cutting down the stems a lot smaller for the teeny tiny ones.
I also had to switch to the Gorilla Gel Glue for the smaller ones. The translucent craft glue kept drying too fast for me to work. But the Gorilla Glue is really, really nice to work with. Next up here, now we're going to hide our hot glue. And there's a little bit of a space between the grass and the stones that I've made. So I'm using some Mod Podge glue around the perimeter of each stone. And then I'm putting some Mod Podge glue up the stone so we can add some moss, some natural moss on, on the, the ancient stones too. And it works out quite well to when you build up the moss, even though you've laid down uh, the, the glue over top of it to harden it, you may have to add some more glue on top of your, your moss just to harden it a little bit too. Now these are hobos, woodland scenes. Teeny tiny little hobos. These are the closest I could find to any the little guys that I could modify to make them into fairies. Even comes with a little fire pit. Where's that little guy? I think there's a guy. There's this, this guy. He's roasting his little hot dog over the fire pit. I was adjusting the little wiener stick and I accidentally broke it. So that's too bad we didn't have him there. He's got something in his hand I wound up cutting out. He's leaning back on something. He could be dancing. And this guy's got a harmonica, so we're going to have him sitting on a little mushroom. I'm going to cut off that little piece there so he can just be standing chill by the rocks. It's going off. We don't need, we don't need him to travel. We want him to stay and make fairy rings. We're also going to be modifying these guys. I have these little wings these little paper wings for a little prototype that i've cut out excuse my messy fingers i have glue and paint all over them so i'm cutting out these little cardstock paper wings and we're going to be also painting those sparkling up those we're going to be painting our little guys as well just grabbing a little tiny piece of cardstock folding that in half I have so much glue. I'm working on two projects at once as I'm filming this. While one dries, I'm working on another. So that's why I got a lot of glue on my fingers right now. I was making the lanterns, the druid lanterns that I posted a couple weeks ago. <laughs> These are so small. but I think they'll work. I found the cardstock paper worked out really well. So I folded up a bunch of little papers and I made a bunch of little wings for all the little hobos, or fairies they should be called. We'll call, we'll call them hobo fairy ring mushroom maker dudes. Now each one of these guys I'm going to modify. I'm using a color shift yellow over top of his orange hat. See here you can see him with his hot dog that he could be roasting over the fire. So I did have it on at one point, but I wound up uh, breaking that off. I wound up playing with it too much. I'm going to give him a nice sparkly blue metallic vest. Everybody's getting something metallic. If I like the color, then I'm just going to paint sparkles over top of it, a translucent sparkles. So he's his pants. I like the color of his pants. So I'm just going to give him some sparkly pants. Oh yeah, sparkly pants makes the world go round. 
so when that dries it'll be full of shimmery shinery like in the green but we're just going to change the color it needs to be metallic so we're going to go with more of a a sage green metallic for him for his jacket we're going to shine him up he wound up getting a metallic blue hat so let's give him some metallic blue pants He's so small, I can't even hang on to him. I had to use tweezers. All right, we got our harmonica guy. He's going to have a green shirt too. And he's going to go for purple sparkle pants. Purple and green. Some joker attitude there giving him a purple hat and now our dancing guy is gonna have I like the blue that he's wearing but let's give him a little purple for his his shirt and let's give him some sparkly pants because his blue's already a nice color same thing as this guy he's got a great orange shirt great hat let's just give it sparkly but his overalls yep they need to be purple Alrighty, now I gotta figure out how to paint these wings. I might have to grab my tweezers again. Yep. And it doesn't look like it at the moment, but each wings I did a two tone color, which blended a little bit into three colors. These little orange wings, I wound up adding some yellow highlights on them. Get a little sticky, they get a little hard. It was hard to take off. <laughs> but I'll just let all the wings dry for a while. There you can check out the two tones with the yellow and orange. And it has a glimmer sparkly on them. So I think this guy with the purple pants and the orange shirt is going to get that one. I think he'll like those wings. There we go. Oh my gosh, they're the just perfect size. I think those little guys are going to like their new wings. Who would have known these little hobos from a train set miniatures would have become fairies one day dancing in a little mushroom fairy ring, doing a little jig, listening to the harmonica, sit, hanging out by the fire. It's a pretty good life to be a miniature. I'd rather that than waiting for a train. So using the Gorilla Glue, again, because it is also is a nice invisible glue, so it's a nice iridescence, you don't have to have the glob of the glue on their back. Ooh, the green and purple wings for that guy. Looks sharp. Oh, he's so cute. That's our harmonica guy. So he's the one that's playing a little tune that's gathering everybody around. I want to show you how detailed these little guys are. It's impressive. Look at that. The detail on these. So tiny. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to use a bit of glue. And I'm going to place him sitting right on an indented little mushroom. Oh, I'm having so much fun putting this all together. You have no idea.
Now our little fire pit. It is so much detail, I did not modify that at all. That one's just ready to go and good to go. Trying to figure out where to put the next guy. I think I'm going to put this one by the fire pit. And looks like he's kneeling down by the fire. This one's chilling on one of the mushrooms here. This one, originally I was going to use him for dancing. But now I did this centerpiece rock. I'm going to put him up here. And here's all our little fairy guys. Five little fairies in a mushroom ring with the five points of the star and five mushrooms or five stones. I just want to go for a walk in the forest and come, up, come upon this little fairy mushroom ring. It would be so amazing in the forest. I definitely would pack a lunch. You never know how long you're going to be gone for. Well, thanks so very much for hanging out with me today all the way to the end. And I want to wish you an absolutely magical day.